गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू डॉक्टर सुभाष सरकार ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया फॉर एजुकेशन श्री कमल सिब्बल चांसलर ऑफ जे एन यू अ डिस्टिंग डिप्लोमैट एंड यू हैड द बेनिफिट ऑफ आई लगो ऑफ इज इडुडिशन ही हेज इंडिकेटेड इन इज ब्रीफ एड्रेस अ सेंस ऑफ वॉट इज इन स्टोर फॉर यू एंड वॉट आर द कॉन्टेम्पोरियस अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड चैलेंजेस अ मैन ऑफ ग्रेट लर्निंग ही बींग चांसलर ऑफ जे एन यू ई स्पीक्स वॉल्यूम्स इट इज बाउंड टू बी ऑन राइज फॉर एवर प्रोफेसर शांति श्री धूलीपुड़ी पंडित वाइस चांसलर जे एन यू अ फायर ब्रांड एम राइट एंड वाई नोट अल्यूमिनस ऑफ जे एन यू and the first woman vice chancellor of jnu i am having second encounter with her today <laughs> the first was in gujarat university there also the vice chancellor was a woman distinguished members of the faculty श्री सुनील गुप्ता जी सेक्रेटरी टू द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड फॉर होम आई एम हियर डियर स्टूडेंट्स बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर गेटिंग पी एच डी आई हैव स्पेशल फैंसी फॉर पी एच डी डिग्री I don't have one my wife has and she keeps on telling me only wiser people have it <laughs> well there's an ignorance about legal profession of which mr kamal sibal knows much because of family situations this is my second visit to the jnu the first one was i think about a decade ago i came here to address on human rights professor mahapatra presided over that function i said in the entire theater i was the only one not from jnu in the corner one boy got up i said sit down you must be jart from jojno i am one <laughs> my expectations from jnu are very high you are a brand too well known sometimes it is very dangerous to be too well known <laughs> you are i have no doubt i am before the right audience at the right time discerning minds with enormous potential to hear my suggestions i am not qualified to give any advice in any case unsolicited advice is never respected you have not solicited it i am so glad that the vice chancellor did not conceal her real design and colors you had on january 3 2024 a celebration of liberation pioneer mata savitri bai phule but that doesn't make her gender bias she cares for all i try to find out how many of the phds have been given to the girls i am sure the number must be balanced but when a mention was made 
about representation of girls, the boys clapped more vigorously. <laughs> so girls take note, our gender is very accommodating and tolerant. <laughs> I must make you aware about the contemporaneous governance mechanism in the country at the moment. Not that you are not aware of it, but sometimes the obvious has to be stated. I have seen governance for a long time because first I was elected to Lok Sabha and the only time I, I was elected, 1989. I had the good great fortune to be a member of the Council of Ministers. And at that point of time, we suffered the pain that our physical gold had to be airlifted to be placed to two banks in Switzerland to sustain our fiscal credibility because our foreign exchange was fluctuating between one billion and two billion dollars. Now, boys and girls, it is over 600 billion dollars. You can be safe. As a member of Lok Sabha, I was gratified, so were my colleagues, that in a year we could give 50 gas connections to anyone we like, gas connections. And we have a Prime Minister who gave 100 million gas connections to needy households free. And everyone has access to that. That's a big change that has come. The governance ecosystem earlier was very difficult. Power corridors were infested with corrupt elements, lies and agents. People were around who extra legally leveraged the decision making. They controlled everything that was against meritocracy. The good thing that has happened now is power corridors have been duly sanitized. Lies and agents are nowhere to be seen. The big change you will feel that you are walking into a system where you have every opportunity to fully exploit your talent and potential, realize your ambitions and dreams. It is so easy now. It was so difficult then. Another good change that has come is there is total transparency and accountability in governance. And that has been brought about in a systemic manner. It has been fueled by technology also. That's another big change. What do youth of today need? They need that democratic values are respected, they are nurtured, they blossom. And a fundamental premise of democratic values is equality before law. Democracy has no meaning if some are more equal than others. If some people carry an impression that they are beyond the reach of law, law can do nothing to them, they have some kind of immunity, then all of us, whom they call ordinary mortals, are put to shame. But now that's gone. Everyone is accountable to law. Everyone has to answer the call of law. And I'm sure you know it more than I do. This is the ground reality today. Even last 48 hours you would have seen dramatic events. So corruption is no longer rewarded. Respect to law has been enforced. The greatest gainer of that is you boys and girls, because you are the greatest stakeholders in governance. You are stakeholders in democratic values. And you are the only one who will carry, as Ambassador Sibyl had said, to a developed nation, Bharat, at 2047, when some of us may not be around. I can say for about myself, I will not be around. So this big change has come in governance. But governance is not sufficient alone. It has to have another change also, and that is economy. Just a decade ago, 
our country was one of the fragile five, as indicated by Ambassador Sibel, that we are already fifth largest global economy on the planet. We are massed ahead of Canada, UK, and France. In the next two, three years, we'll be marching ahead of Germany and Japan to be the third largest global economy. So that's another big change that has taken place. We could never imagine that a country that was taken to be a burden on the globe, being fragile five, is an asset to the world. That's second. Third, global institutions used to look, up, look down upon us. They used to take India as vulnerable from several aspects. No longer that situation. If we talk about International Monetary Fund, they indicate to the entire world that India's rise amongst large economies is the highest. We are number one ahead of China also. If we go to the other aspect, then World Bank says India is a favorite destination of investment and opportunity. That's not something which we ever dreamed of. So right now the kind of development we are seeing in the country is much beyond at least my dreams, my expectations. I never thought in my lifetime I will see the kind of infrastructure that is all around and that is for all you to see. The point is that you are walking into a mechanism, taking a big leap in the larger world after getting your degrees, where governance is exactly you want wholesome governance, affirmative government policies that allow you to exploit your pot potential and an economy that is globally respected is finally strong. You therefore have enough opportunities and challenges. You can make most of it. If you look around, the technological advancement that has taken place in the country, it is unthinkable. It is beyond belief. In 2022, our digital transactions, boys and girls, were more than four times that of USA, UK, France, and Germany taken together. Can you, can you ever imagine it? That our digital transactions, and look at our platform UPI, a platform that is being adopted globally, including by country, city countries like Singapore. If you look at the genius of our people, the kind of adaptation they have shown to technology is remarkable, unbelievable. We started a few years ago where we hardly had mobile manufacturer here in the country. Now we are the second largest in the world. We export and our internet usage is more than that of per capita, more than that of US and China taken together. It's a big change that's taking place. But good governance, good economy and technology. What are the results? The results are that people have benefited enormously during COVID and otherwise out of technology. Let me give an illustration to the category to which I belong, that's farmers category. More than 110 million farmers every year thrice get direct into their bank accounts 6,000 rupees. What is significant and important is not that they get the amount from the government. That what is outstandingly important and a game changer, that farmer is equipped to receive it. That's a big change. How did it happen? It didn't happen overnight. Someone thought about it, that there has to be banking inclusion. You cannot have inclusive growth unless you systemically bring about a system whereby everyone can benefit. 500 million people were brought into the banking inclusion by governmental policies. A big change that has been extremely helpful to all of us. That change has come about. That's one. But look around how are we placed globally. ISRO. We had the good fortune on 23rd August 2023. Chandrayaan 3 landed 
on the south pole of moon no one had ever landed there and we had our imprint tiranga and shakti point on the moon we became the first country to achieve that distinction there was a time when we started our own satellites were put in space by some other machinery another other mechanism but now our isro has gone to that level that we put in space satellites of countries like usa uk and other developed nations that's where we have gone boys and girls all i am telling you is that these big changes have taken place because there is vision there is passion there is mission there is execution by those at the helm of affairs of governance in the country these big changes are such that the world is stunned we must take pride in them if we go a step further our vikrant indigenously made our frigates indigenously made our tejas aircrafts indigenously made our helicopters indigenously made we have come a long way when we look at infrastructure bharat mandapam is one of the 10 top convention centers in the world but look around yeso bhumi where you can park more than 3000 cars and have any kind of exhibition which even our company used to go abroad to help them because we didn't have infrastructure look at the state of our highways our airports our railway stations things have dramatically changed and they have changed because there is concern the society will change only and only when you care for the last man in the row our uh, digital penetration is there in the villages you will get 5g in the villages and there's a big change that has come place come about there was a time a decade and back electricity not being available 24 into 7 power shortage all that is behind us a big change so our executive has performed beyond expectations has laid a road map in amrit kal which is our kartavya kal which is our gorav kal firm foundations have been laid to take our bharat to be the leading nation of the world a developed nation in 2047 but you are the ambassadors of that you are foot soldiers it will be taken on your shoulders you bear the responsibility and you are lucky that you have an ecosystem that doesn't pull you down it helps you accelerate it puts you on a fast track that's the big change has come when we look around while we are having phenomenal growth exponential growth we are a country that makes available free food available to 800 million people and that's being done from 1st april 2020 as indicated by the honorable prime minister it will be continued for next 5 years a big change the way we tackled pandemic covid the world was stunned ambassador sibal will tell you how powerful it has been in soft diplomacy that we could give our co vaccine covid vaccine to about 100 countries all of them greatly appreciate our gesture when we held g20 and the motto was something which has been embedded in our civilization ethos of 5000 years one earth one family one motto that's how we believe in it we demonstrate it boys and girls always remember take pride in bharatiya take pride in being citizens of this great nation be proud of the achievements we are having at the moment i am sometimes very sad when i see knowledgeable minds informed minds having indigestible mechanism for growth of this country they go outside the country or make assertions inside the country 
tend to tarnish and demean our constitutional institutions. They go to the extent that India doesn't have a functional democracy. Boys and girls, you are discerning minds. India is the only country in the world, as indicated by Ambassador Sibyl, one-sixth of humanity, which has constitutionally structured democracy at the village level. <clears throat> at the Panchayat Samiti level, at Jila Parishad level, at state level, and at the central level. Let me take you to some of the changes that have taken place in the domain I wear hat of one of them. As chairman of Rajya Sabha, I am extremely gratified to tell you. 20th September and 21st September was a historic day. Women Reservation Bill was passed. Now, one third reservation for women in Lok Sabha and state legislatures will take place. Imagine Lok Sabha and Raj, uh, state legislatures serving women. More than one third, because they can contest from general category also. And this reservation is horizontal and vertical. There is already reservation for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. But within that reservation also you will have one third for women. That's a big change, not a small change. We were in this country being bled by provisions like Article 370. Constitutionally, that article is supposed to be a temporary article. It was breeding the nation. We could do away with it. The whole nation rejoiced at it. We had a celebratory mood in the country when on 22nd January there was consecration ceremony of Ram Lala at Ayodhya. A great occasion. But what is significant and which should be noticed that a pain of 500 years was undone and our aspirations rectified with commitment to righteousness. Through established procedure of law, there was no deviation at all. That is where we are in India today. That is our Bharat. And why not look back? Thousands of years ago, we had Nalanda, Takshila, we had. We had governess styles. I would appeal to boys and girls, please read the Indian Constitution as it has been signed by framers of the Constitution. There are 22 paintings there. They reflect depth of our 5,000 years of civilization. Gurukul, Indus Valley, Ram, Sita and Lakshman coming back to Ayodhya. Lord Krishna giving sage advice to Arjun in Kurukshetra and down the line. If you look around, you'll find not many countries have can civilizational depth in terms of years for more than 500, 600 years, 1,000 years, okay, 5,000 years. Boys and girls, all that I need to indicate to you that you are well suited at the moment to think out of the box. When it comes to disruptive technologies, as was indicated by Ambassador Sibyl, quantum computing, India is one of the countries in single digit to focus on it. Our green hydrogen mission, we are a country which are focusing on 6G technology in two parts. Commercialization of it, it will take place from 2025 to 2030. These are enormous facilities for you. Our accomplishments as global leadership are reflected. European Union was already a part of G20. But when we had the presidency of G20, we got inclusion of African Union. And mark the difference, composition of the countries of the European Union and that of African Union. Very rightly focused by Ambassador Sibyl, that we became the voice of Global South. Just imagine what a significant factor in global economy they are, in global demography they are. But we brought them to the center stage. We discovered during G20 
a trade route between India, Indian Ocean, Middle East, which was in existence earlier. How proud we feel that when someone is being held hostage on the high seas and the ship is of another nation, it is our nation, our navy that rescues them. All I mean to tell you, boys and girls, mood of the nation is a beat. And last it was seen on 26 January 2024 on Kartavya Could you ever imagine that our woman power will be so explosive, positively so impactful in that large number, outnumbering males in every walk of life? When we have that kind of a situation, we must engage in neutralizing anti-national narratives. The greatest challenge, as I indicated, was that when an informed mind capitalizes on ignorance of people, we had a gentleman who was in driver's seat of economy in the country for 10 years. He came from outside, of course had our origin, went back, the kind of language he speaks, the kind of predictions he makes, and when he's proved so massively wrong that economy cannot rise more than 5%, the rise was at that point of time 7.6%. He has the audacity to speak out, superpower banker kya karoge, kisi desh ko preshan karoge. He's an ignorant mind, a perverted mind, who doesn't know our psyche, who doesn't know our sanskriti, who doesn't know our civilizational values. This country has never historically engaged in expansion. You never engaged. You are the minds who have to neutralize these kind of narratives, anti-national narratives. If you observe silence at this time, trust me boys and girls, your silence will resonate in your ears for years to come. You will be thinking, why did I not speak out? We are a country where iconic status is accorded on parameters that are baffling. We label someone as a great journalist, as a great lawyer. Why? We don't ask questions. JNU is the right place, epicenter, nerve center to engage into this scrutiny and probe. If some outside universities have become hotbeds of anti-Indian narratives, and what a shame to us, those narratives are floated by people of Indian origin, be students or faculty. You have to rise to the occasion to combat these forces, neutralize them, engage into discussions, because it is your obligation first and last to take this nation Bharat at 2047 as a world leader. Boys and girls, I should not speak more. Am I right? Well, I request the Honorable Vice Chancellor that I invite students of GNU to visit new building of parliament. Be my guests, come in batches. And you will have the occasion to see two things. One, how it could be visualized suddenly that we must have a new parliament building. And how it could be brought about in 30 months. Not a building, everything inside. You will have the occasion to see. You see the big change. We have in Rashtrapati Bhavan, a tribal woman of modest background as president of the country. This is a big change that has come about. Last. Very often when someone says last, particularly lawyers, that is never the last argument. <laughs> but I'll keep it last. Never be under tension, never be under stress. Never a fear of failure. Act as per your aptitude. Heavens have never fallen, I have checked up historically. And science tells me they can never fall. You can trust me to that extent. Do what you feel like. 
which stars are enormous for you. The government policies are amazing. And last of the last, I express a great sense of gratitude to JNU. I am beholden to JNU. Before coming to this place, I was presiding Rajya Sabha. On my right was India's finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. She is the spine of Indian economy. A world leader in economics. She has stirred Indian economy to, to that big height. Your alumnus. <laughs> Next to her was Dr. S. Jashankar, India's foreign minister. <laughs> you must have released his statements in the country and outside. It is beyond argument now. India's foreign policy is determined by India for India's cause, for India's interest. So when foreign affairs and economics is concerned, the nation will be ever gratitude, ever in gratitude to JNU. <laughs> Respect your teachers. Respect your parents. Be in connect with your colleagues. This connect will be nectar of life as you march in your journey ahead. Thank you so much. Be ever blessed.